FM's hot seat. Hot seat. Hear the real story behind the story. Coming right at you. Only on 933 KFM. Welcome back to this edition of the 933 KFM Hot Seat and we'll be discussing education, a pet subject of Bishop Zak Niringie. He is uh, Assistant Bishop of Kampala Diocese, uh, Assistant Bishop of Kampala Diocese in the Church of Uganda and Chairman of uh, the Governing Council of the African Peer Review Mechanism. Uh, Bishop, very nice to have you once again. Thank you. <coughs> you announced recently that you're retiring and you said you're retiring seven years before your due date of retirement and immediately you announced that you started moving in schools and launching the school feeding program what is it that is forcing your area retirement and what is it about the school feeding program that you're spearheading um, my uh, my life's <laughs> journey is uh, is really informed by my faith uh, in God and uh, so it's a sense of Lord, where are you leading me to? Um, that sounds very, you know, up here and so on. But really, that's the bottom line. Uh, do do I know that that's what it must be? Do I have this hotline with God? That, uh, but yes, I do have this sense that um, uh, that's the calling of God in my life. Uh, by the way, I should say to you, uh, when I started out as a young adult, I was studying physics. I was doing a master's in physics, in fact. Uh, but at that point, I got a sense, no, I wasn't to spend the rest of my life teaching physics. Uh, so I quit uh, to join uh, a student ministry, working with students, uh, talking about Jesus uh, in Uganda, among students all over the African continent. A time came, I moved on. So it really make the point, I, uh, I'm, I'm that kind of guy who senses when I have a, this sense within me, and my family that it's time to move uh, to where God may be leading me I move so that's that's one but secondly over the last uh, 10 years um, my passion for justice social justice economic justice political justice uh, has taken me places uh, I've had opportunities for leadership uh, uh, continentally but here as well in Uganda so and really being part of those different processes as in IRC the interregional Council of Uganda, Uganda Joint Christian Council, uh, the Africa Peer Review uh, Mechanism here in Uganda, all those opportunities opened my eyes to some of the dire uh, uh, straits, the, the challenges that this country faces, one of which is education, education. And I travel this country and I can see the impact of it. So I thought I want to give my full-time attention to these kinds of questions, uh, education, healthcare, uh, uh, youth unemployment, 83% uh, among the youth. Uh, is there something that I can contribute? Um, the challenges in our schooling system, uh, you've already heard me, uh, the challenges of governance in our country. So I really want to give full-time attention uh, to this. I believe very passionately this is uh, part of my exercise of faith. Uh, justice is at the very heart of the Bible. Justice, uh, you check. Every time, by the way, the Bible talks about righteousness, uh, that word should actually be translated justice. So it's for that. And uh, specifically on education, uh, we really face a massive crisis. Uh, I don't... Re I it's really disheartening when you speak to those in the education sector, particularly in government, and when you visit parents, uh, and it's as though really are business as usual, things are, things are dire. It's, it's, it's terrible what's happening in the educational system, especially public education. If you think, uh, Charles, that in this country, 100 kids who begin in primary one, only 20 will sit primary seven. Our completion rates are dreadful. Compare with the uh, regional average, East Africa, uh, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, uh, eight average. I feel like Burundi, with all that he has gone through, hmm. has a completion rate of about 75. Uganda, 20%, 25%. The latest um, weather, weather report put that number at 68%. No, 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 put the number of uh, dropout rate at 68%, meaning about um, 32 you see that today. there is dropout rate and completion rates are actually not the same. Mm. Dropout rate is to say that the when you enter a, a cycle, a cycle, how many actually complete that cycle? Mm. So the cycle at primary level is a cycle, secondary level. So dropout rate 
uh, is a is a is an it integrates both levels. So I'm talking about completion rate at primary school, primary level. Not P7. Those who P7. Sit P7. Those who sit P7. Mm. Uh, it's 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 25 percent, 20 percent. It's it's definitely below 30 percent. And you check this. This sounds unbelievable. I've been up country. You check. It is true. In some places, uh, it's it's much worse than that. If you think uh, that in our school system, uh, the dropout rates, the completion rates for the girl child are dreadful, the girl child suffers the most, and we found out why. Uh, toilets, simple thing. There are no toilets. There are no pit latrines in our in our system. Can you so, question? Yes. What can you do? You say you can. You're dedicating your time to do that. What can you do? What do you plan to do? <laughs> well, what can I do? I think the other is what can we do all? Yes, what can I do, uh, uh, Zach Nidingye? Uh, because I have a leadership role in the country, I chaired the education board of the Church of Uganda for four years. And so one thing I can certainly do is bring to light these issues all over the country to the government. Um, for example, the issue of school feeding. 80% of our children in the primary education system, they do not have a meal during the day. What does that mean? They are hungry all the day. What does that mean? They are not able to concentrate to learning. So, what can we do? We have an education act that makes it difficult to compel parents to pay for lunch so that children can feed at school. We have a policy direction that our president, the Ministry of Education, has proposed that children actually should carry packed lunch to school. The truth of the matter is, this has failed dismally. It can't work. Why is Why can't it work? It can't work because, A, as you travel across this country, you, you both statistics tell us about how many families in this country are able to have two meals a day. In other words, how many families are actually able to live leftover? Because you see, when you say park food, often it means in the rural areas, it's leftover food. So the question is, how many of these families are able to have leftover food? But secondly, if we should assume that food is to be cooked in the morning, you have massive challenges related to what kinds of food. And therefore, one, there is actually not enough food. But secondly, if that was to be the case, you know the weather in this country. Uh, how many of those would be able at lunchtime for that food to still be healthy to be eaten? So uh, it's, it's a whole range of issues. The other, actually, is I think that we have a situation in our country in which parents parents zeal to ensure that the kids are well fed well educated i think this sense that parents have been told it's a free education you know just send the kids to school i think it's created a certain sense among our parents it's unbelievable going across the country to see the level of irresponsibility among our parents uh, this whole idea it's free uh, sometimes i wonder is that part of the you know the fact that in the villages this whole graduated tax doesn't happen the kind of psych that has created so various reasons what we know for sure is that kids are not packing lunch to go to school. What we know for sure is well over 80% of the children are not having lunch. Now, we also know that in schools where PTAs or the management have sought to require parents to pay, they are so afraid. They say to us, the uh, uh, RDC will be uh, uh, breathing uh, 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 fire on you uh, because this is against government policy. And actually, when you read the Education Act, the Education Act is fairly clear. The feeding of the children is the responsibility of the parents. But the same Education Act says that no authority can charge extra fees, which means that no school authority, no management authority can actually require parents to pay. So the Education Act makes it impossible to co actually compare parents rather than pack food to actually pay for the food. And we've been arguing, mm. why don't you translate the food that you have packed? Bishop, the parents naturally want to feed their children? I, I, I don't think it's something that you can legislate, but... Uh, no, well, it's not legislation. To the extent that you legislate, you say, you see the Education Act, it's a very good act. 
it divides the responsibilities of the different stakeholders the role of government the role of the parents the school the foundation bodies and i think it is right to say it's the responsibility of the parents to feed however it's about management institutions have to be managed and management has to do with uh, appropriate regulations so there definitely needs to be a regulation that says something to the effect parents need to indeed feed your children how they need to pay a fee so that the schools can be able to cook this so is in the regulation bishop's a better contradiction you just said that how many families yes you put out a rhetorical question how many families in this country are able to have two meals a day and you said packing food for lunch as the government regulation is at the moment or policy directive is requires leftover food if you translate that failure to have a meal into making a monetary contribution who are you expecting to contribute well i can say this to you on the one hand this sense which i've already communicated that upe bonava some means free it's created within our population the sense that actually government does everything is that true really i, I mean the, the question of hungry children is something that you know regardless of what the government says it still remains with the home the kids return home you know the welfare of the children uh, is the is, is an interest of the parents surely you cannot you are not suggesting that because the parliament i mean the the government says free education that the parents immediately expect that the government will feed the children but well, well, it's very, that's very interesting that's precisely the the mystery it is actually true the truth of the matter is our kids are not feeding in school so you may theorize about it that's actually true and we are saying the practical the way to implement to ensure children are fed they eat is let's require parents to pay now those who are not able to pay and they are there we have found out maybe close to a quarter of the kids in our primary school system uh, for one reason or the other should really be characterized as either orphans or vulnerable in one way or the other now government has a social protection policy therefore those could be provided for through that process could and that needs to happen could we carry on that discussion after short commercial break we'll be right back it's live it's hot provocative and digs deep into the issues it's kfm's hot seat in association with nile gold and crystal mold lager beyond an ordinary